Hi folks, you're gonna wanna watch this video, Plunge Milling. Takes a little bit of extra work to get the programming done, at least at the moment, but holy cow, we've been blown away with how it can help you get more out of your mill. Let's take a look at a couple of different strategies, tool paths, tips and tricks. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. Take a look at parts like this, where we've got these relatively deep and narrow slots. Or this guy, where we've got a slot here that we probably have to turn on its side and use a slitting saw, or a really long tool that's prone to chatter. Or in this example, just something that's really difficult to machine or surface, or how else are you gonna get that shape put in there? This is where plunge milling or plunge roughing can shine. It can either help you with your final dimensions or it can just be a strategy to help you remove that material in an efficient and safe way and then come in and do your finishing tool paths. What's awesome about plunge roughing is it lets us use really long tools relatively easily or free of chatter and it's pushing the load actually straight into the tool, which means we've got the one inch modular shear hog here. And the way I would normally say to run this is choke up. Use the really short stubby adapter. This maximizes the radial stiffness, but no, I don't wanna do that today. They sell a medium length adapter. It's about 2.6 inches or 65 millimeters, but nope, not what I'm interested in. Let's go all out. M12 full length adapter, 4.1 or 103 millimeters. This is not an easy tool to run in a traditional machining strategy, but let's take a look at plunge roughing with it. Folks, look at that. It sounds great. What's the recipe? We're starting out here, max RPMs on the Tormach 1100 5140, plunging at 34 inches a minute. It's about 6.6 thousandths feed per rev. The key though is what is this step over? And that's driven by the sketch that we're using to create this toolpath. Like I said, this isn't the easiest thing to set up from a CAD and CAM standpoint, but I think it's worth it. We've created a point and we're using a sketch rectangular pattern in the Fusion CAD environment with a step over of 0.1 inches. Once we've got those points along our line, it's actually relatively simple to create our tool path. We use a drilling operation. We've got a one inch flat end mill set up within that drilling op. We can either pick the individual points or you can pick one and choose select same diameter. It will pick all of them in your sketch with the new Fusion updates though, we've got containment boundaries, so you could create sketches to contain the zones, very helpful. So it's actually not that bad to set this up. You can hear as we're engaging more of this tool, we're removing more material, we're just pushing it a little bit too hard, and that's what we were doing. We spent a bunch of time running a bunch of these tests off camera to figure out how hard can we push it. Now, I don't love that we're starting to hear the spindle bog down, but this actually did work just fine. Nevertheless, I view this as a process that's awesome because of process reliability. So let's finish slotting this whole thing out. And we're gonna back down that feed per rev to 5 thousandths of an inch. That's still a 25.7 inch per minute plunge rate. We're moving pretty good and you can see and you can hear, this is just great. We're always interested in learning new stuff. How can we use our machine to make better parts, more reliable parts, better tool life, and maybe we'll come up with something even better than this, but I'll tell you, we were pretty excited about what this can let us do. What's awesome about this is the fact that we're able to take advantage of axial load, not only in the tool, but in the whole machine. We're cheating and it's awesome. By pushing straight up with those cutting forces, the machine doesn't care at all that this is a longer tool. And you can see we've also got really good chip evacuation. Okay, so that last test was more a question of, can we push this really long shear hog harder than I thought we could? And, and is there a way for us to really remove a lot of material in a really deep slot? Let's switch gears and look at what's probably a little bit more of a real world application. We've got this joint part right here, and there's quite a few different ways that we could machine this, but it's a relatively tricky slot. It's 0.3 inches wide and one inch is deep. So absolutely, we could take a quarter inch end mill and we could work our way down there, but it comes back to process reliability. It depends on your machine and your cooling and your tooling, but you could absolutely do this. It would also be easy, in our experience at least, to chip weld the tool. 
It's also too narrow to really do an adaptive strategy with a quarter inch tool. You just don't have enough width to make use of it. And stepping down to something like a 3 16 tool, you've now got a huge stick out over five times the length relative to the diameter of that 3 16 tool. And it's just not gonna be a fun way to machine a slot. And frankly, it's a bit of an unusual or specific tool you'd have to purchase or have on hand. So let's plunge mill it. What I love about this is it's simple. I don't have to reorient the part and I can use the tool that I already have on hand and probably already have set up for the machine. I realized partway through filming this, wait a minute here, let's switch it to the other side. We've got a much better camera angle and you can see just how it gets me so excited. I can't believe I never tried this before. I'm guessing other cam packages may have tool paths that are built in to automatically run a plunge roughing. I'd love to see that come in Fusion. But again, using the points isn't too bad. We can make it work. And so on a slot like that, we've removed the bulk of the material and we can now come in with that same quarter inch tool, clean up those slots to final dimensions, hit your spec, and you've got a much better process. Hope you guys learned, hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you next Wednesday.